Once upon a time in a bustling city, there lived a young woman named Emma. Emma was known for her intelligence and analytical mind. She had the ability to think deeply and critically about any situation, which made her a valuable asset at work and among her friends. However, there was a downside to her constant overthinking. Emma often found herself paralyzed by indecision and overwhelmed by anxiety. One sunny morning as Emma sipped her coffee and stared out of her apartment window, she reflected on her life. Despite her intelligence and talents, she felt like she was stuck in a rut. She had dreams and aspirations, but couldn't seem to turn them into reality. Emma realized that her tendency to overthink was holding her back from taking action. She decided that it was time for a change. Emma resolved to harness the power of her thoughts without allowing them to imprison her in a web of doubt and anxiety. Little did she know that her journey would lead to unexpected discoveries, personal growth, and the realization that sometimes thinking is an asset, but overthinking is a hindrance. Emma's overthinking habit was not something that had developed overnight. It had been with her for as long as she could remember. Her parents had always praised her for being a thinker, and this praise had shaped her identity. She was the one who could find solutions to complex problems, analyze situations from every angle, and offer thoughtful advice to friends and colleagues. But the more Emma thought, the more she worried. She second-guessed her decisions, replayed conversations in her head, and imagined worst-case scenarios. This overthinking was like a mental prison, trapping her in a cycle of anxiety and indecision. One evening, Emma's best friend Sarah came over for dinner. As they sat on Emma's cozy balcony, sipping wine and watching the city lights below, Sarah noticed the troubled expression on Emma's face. Emma, you're one of the smartest people I know, Sarah said. But I've noticed that your constant overthinking is preventing you from living your life to the fullest. You're afraid to take risks and make mistakes, and it's holding you back. Emma sighed, her eyes reflecting a mixture of frustration and self-awareness. You're right, Sarah. I feel like I'm stuck in a never-ending cycle of analysis and doubt. But what can I do about it? Determined to break free from the chains of overthinking, Emma began her quest for balance. She knew that her analytical mind was a gift, and she didn't want to lose it. Instead, she wanted to learn how to use it more effectively. She started by reading books on mindfulness and meditation. Emma discovered that these practices could help her quiet the incessant chatter of her mind and bring her into the present moment. She also began to journal regularly, writing down her thoughts and feelings as a way of gaining clarity. One day, while browsing the shelves of a bookstore, Emma stumbled upon a book titled The Art of Thinking by Professor David Carter. Intrigued, she purchased the book and started reading. Professor Carter argued that thinking was indeed an asset, but overthinking was its shadow side. According to Professor Carter, overthinking often resulted from fear. Fear of making mistakes, fear of failure, and fear of the unknown. He explained that the key to harnessing the power of thought lay in confronting these fears and embracing them as opportunities for growth. Inspired by Professor Carter's book, Emma decided to embark on a journey inward. She began by confronting her fears one by one. She made a list of the things that had been holding her back and started tackling them head on. First, Emma decided to apply for a promotion at work. She had always been hesitant to take on more responsibility, fearing that she might not be up to the task. But this time, she pushed through her doubts and submitted her application. To her surprise, she was selected for an interview. As the interview date approached, Emma's overthinking kicked into high gear. She rehearsed her answers to every possible question, researched the company inside out, and even practiced her handshake. But in the process, she forgot to be herself. The day of the interview arrived, and Emma walked into the room feeling like an imposter. She answered questions robotically, trying to recall all the information she had crammed into her brain. The interview panel noticed her nervousness and lack of authenticity. 
After the interview, Emma received a polite rejection email. She was disappointed but decided to view it as a valuable learning experience. She realized that overthinking had made her lose sight of her true self, and she had come across as insincere. Emma's next challenge was to embrace imperfection. She had always strived for perfection in everything she did, which often led to procrastination and self-criticism. To break this pattern, she decided to take up a new hobby, painting. Emma had never considered herself artistic, but she wanted to prove to herself that it was okay to make mistakes and create imperfect art. She set up a small studio in her apartment, bought canvases and paints and began to experiment. At first her paintings were far from perfect. They were filled with smudges, uneven lines and awkward compositions. But Emma didn't let that deter her. She kept painting, and with each stroke of the brush she learned to let go of her need for perfection. As weeks turned into months, Emma's paintings improved. She discovered her own style and found joy in the creative process itself, rather than fixating on the end result. She realized that imperfection was not a flaw, but a beautiful part of the human experience. Throughout her journey, Emma had learned valuable lessons about the importance of balance, confronting fear, and embracing imperfection. But the most significant revelation came when she recognized that thinking alone was not enough. Action was essential. One evening, while reading a book on entrepreneurship, Emma had an idea that ignited her passion. She had always dreamed of starting her own business, and now she had a vision for it. She wanted to create a platform that connected aspiring artists with art enthusiasts, allowing them to share their work and inspire each other. Emma knew that her overthinking could easily lead to analysis paralysis, so she decided to act quickly. She wrote a business plan, reached out to a few artists she admired, and started building a website. The process was exhilarating, and for the first time, Emma felt like she was truly living her dreams. As her platform grew, Emma faced challenges and setbacks, but she approached them with a newfound resilience. She understood that failure was not a reflection of her worth, but a stepping stone to success. And with each challenge, she learned and adapted, becoming a more confident and capable entrepreneur. Years passed, and Emma had transformed into a new person, someone who valued the power of thought but didn't let it paralyze her. She had found a harmonious balance between thinking and taking, 